Hi, my name is Dylan, and this is the Abandonment Prevention Project. We're changing the rescue formula. What if we trained them? So four years ago, when I decided to stop training MMA, I needed something else to focus on. I've always needed a life goal to pursue. And fighting was kind of the means to the end, which was to be able to buy my own land and open up my own rescue when I was too old to keep fighting anymore. So when I retired and I decided that fighting wasn't for me anymore, I immediately moved to my next goal. <laughs> so when the pandemic hit and fighting wasn't really a realistic outlet anymore, I decided to move on to my next primary goal, which was figure out some way to open up my own rescue. Of course, the first thing that I did was I started doing a lot of research on how to start a rescue, what's needed legally, and just asset-wise, what do you need to start a rescue? How much money do I need to make on the side in order to be able to afford all of these things? So as I'm doing this research, I also reach out to all of my local shelters and rescues and start trying to volunteer, which to be honest, just ended up being picking up a lot of shit. You know, we get to walk the dogs and you kind of had to like earn your stripes up to be able to walk dogs because you needed to be trusted with these dogs and everything. Um, but what I didn't get is I didn't get like mentorship or anything. I made it very clear that I was here to open up my own rescue and work towards that goal. And unfortunately I ended up stopping volunteering at different rescues because I was not learning anything more than you have to pick up their shit. But what I did see in a lot of these rescues, both the ones that I was at and as I started doing more research outside of my range, was that there are a lot of common flaws that are just sort of accepted as the reality and the way things are in the rescue industry. And I knew that if I wanted to start a rescue, then those obvious flaws were not going to be acceptable and I was going to have to do something a little different. So after just a few months of working towards this goal, I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to go the traditional path of trying to open up my own rescue, and I had to find a new way. But before we talk about what needs to change and what we are gonna be doing differently, we first need to talk about what are shelters and what are rescues. Shelters are awesome. They do the best that they can. They're not meant to long-term board a dog. They're government-owned facilities, and their primary job is to keep dogs and strays off the streets. Take your lost dog and put them in somewhere safe. Take the abandoned dog, keep them off the street so that we don't end up having packs of wild dogs running around neighborhoods because Paul and Betty from down the street thought that they were gonna retire early by getting a bunch of pit bull puppies and selling them for 800 bucks a pop. So shelters do really important work, but they're not meant to hold dogs. They need to be able to have space available for the next dogs coming in and they can't really say no. So when they are reaching capacity, they have two choices. They can either find a rescue to be able to take the dogs from them, or they have to euthanize. But rescues don't have to take dogs from the shelter. If they're at capacity, they can just be like, we can't take any more dogs. So being a no-kill rescue is really nice and all, but it's really nothing more than a buzzword because the dogs that they don't take, they're just euthanized at the shelter. So hearing this would make you think, okay, well, the obvious answer is we just need more rescues, right? We need more rescues. We need larger rescues that can hold more dogs. That makes sense. That's what 99% of the people looking at this are currently thinking right now. But that is assuming that the current rescue formula is the absolute best that we can do for these dogs. And the current rescues are doing everything that they possibly can to get these dogs ready to be rehomed. And the truth is, they're just not. So in America, there are about 3,000 rescues right now and most of them have been in business for over 15 years. So that would make you think that these rescues are these really well-established businesses that have been running for a really long time and they're at the top of their game, they're running like a well-oiled machine. But the reality of the situation is most rescues is actually a row of eight or so kennels in the back of your grandma's pole barn. Because the people that started rescues 15 plus years ago didn't start a rescue because they were passionate about adopting out dogs. They started a rescue because they bought land and they needed a way to pay for that land that was relatively little work. So rescue owners didn't buy land to get a rescue, they got a rescue because they had the land. And the easiest way to run a rescue is to run it like a shelter, meaning these dogs are still in their kennels for 23 hours a day, they get to go to the bathroom twice a day, and they're just waiting for someone to come along and save them from the environment that they're in. Now I think pretty much everyone would agree that the rescue environment wreaks havoc on the dog's mental health, especially one-year-old dogs. And what ends up happening is we have this dog that could have been helped with just a little bit of work, but since rescues don't train their dogs, this dog becomes worse and worse until they go to someone's house 
that person wasn't prepared to take such a mentally unhealthy dog. So that dog is returned multiple times until they're eventually euthanized. Or the dog doesn't even get that opportunity and they start to develop reactivity and aggression inside their kennel and they end up needing to be behaviorally euthanized because of the environment that they were put in. Not because of their genetics, not because that they were an aggressive dog, but because we put them in solitary confinement until we made them so mentally unhealthy that they did an unnatural behavior which resulted in violence. <laughs> which resulted in violence. <clears throat> And as the person looking to adopt a dog, what you're going to hear all of the time is, if this dog just had a little bit of training, they could be amazing. They have such a good personality, and if they just had a little bit of training, oh my god, imagine what kind of dog this could be. And what my question is, is you had the dog, and this dog in some cases is paying for your mortgage. So why aren't you putting in the effort to train this dog? You see, that's my solution, is I don't think we need bigger shelters that can hold more dogs in solitary confinement. We need to train these dogs. One-year-old dogs are the most commonly abandoned and euthanized dogs in the world. And the number one reason is lack of training. I want those potential adoptees to not be someone that's willing to take a mentally unhealthy dog. I don't want those people to be the only ones that can adopt a dog. I want potential rescuers to meet that dog after they have reached their potential because it doesn't take a lot of time, it doesn't take a lot of work, it does take consistency, it does take that rescuer understanding what's going on so that they can keep moving forward in that dog's development. But I believe that if we hit the ground running with these dogs, these dogs will be flying out of the rescues and not held for months or even years at a time until they get so mentally unhealthy that we need to euthanize them because nobody's coming. So that's what the Abandonment Prevention Project is. We adopt, train, and rehome abandoned one-year-old dogs. And we train them to be companion level dogs, meaning some dogs are off leash, some dogs are able to be introduction service dog level. It's not about our training can get them here, it's about helping that dog reach their potential and we have a formula that can do that. So if you are at the point to where you need to train your dog or you're thinking about abandoning that dog because they're becoming a burden on your life, then follow our program, reach out to us, and we will get you the help that you need so that you can succeed with that dog, whether it's genetic issues or the environment that is holding you back. Or if you are thinking about adopting a dog, either from us or from your local shelter, you can follow along and we can help you do the work that's gonna be necessary to repair your dog's mental health. This is YouTube's first rescue, meaning 100% of the proceeds that we gain through this channel and our website go towards training abandoned dogs. Please like, share, and comment on this video. We'd like to get the word out so that we can help as many dogs as possible. Thank you for your time.